Hello and welcome everyone to our Tech Thursday series. During this series, we'll be doing some experiments and we'll show you interesting and technically advanced attacks on the networks and web applications such that might look impossible to perform. We'll also show you what the consequences of not having sufficient security measures in place can be and what exploiting of minor vulnerabilities may lead to. In our first episode, we'll focus on the security of HTTPS web applications and solution to the so-called breach attack. As you may know, HTTPS is used to encrypt the web application traffic. This simply means that the traffic, even if it's intercepted by attacker, can't be decrypted and no secrets can be revealed. HTTPS is the main line of defense against the man-in-the-middle attacks and it is recommended for everyone who is using online banking or e-commerce on public available internet like airport or hotel hotspots. As described in the article, just having HTTPS enabled might not be as secure as we thought, as this attack can guess some of the encrypted traffic secrets. However, for this attack to be possible, there are some requirements that have to be met by the application and the web server configuration. We have been asked by Mr. Tony Stark from Stark Industries to test the security of his new web platform called Jarvis that is about to be released to the world for public use. We have noticed that there is a possibility to perform a breach attack on it and get access to highly privileged accounts. For your information, I'll just show you that the HTTPS security settings for these web applications meet the highest industry standard, except one thing that will let us perform the attack. One of the most important things for a hacker is to have some information about the application. Since the breach attack allows us only to reveal a small part of encrypted content, we have to know exactly what we're looking for. Typically for web applications, these secrets might be some authorization tokens or session cookies. In some situations, this may be also some personal information like credit card numbers or social numbers. As attackers, we have to know what we're looking for, we have to know at least a part of the secret or what word it's surrounded by. We also have to know its length and the range of characters it's made of. Since the application allows us to register accounts, we have created some dummy account to get that information. Another requirement for our attack to be possible is the ability to reflect some text on the website. In most examples, this can be something like the search form in the Jarvis application, which reflects our search query on the results page. The last requirement is enabled HTTP compression. This is the fundamental element for this attack, as the whole guessing algorithm are based on the way that the text compression works. In short, if some parts of the text are repeated instead of duplicating them, their next occurrences are just marked as a copy of some bytes from elsewhere. So the more parts are repeated, the bigger is the compression. If we compare two of the same pages and one of them will have our secret word duplicated while the other will have some random word, the size of the page with the duplicated word will be smaller due to the compression. This is the overall description of the way that this attack works, so if anyone is more interested, in can, I can redirect you to the detailed description from Black Hat. Now, since we know that the application meets all of those requirements, we're ready to try our attack. We've already infiltrated Mr. Stark Network by successfully phishing one of his employees, so now that we're inside Stark Industries Network, we can perform many in the middle attacks. After setting some initial parameter for our tool, such as the IP address of our victim, which is Tony's computer, the part of the token that we know, its length and the alphabet, we are ready to perform the attack.
A while later, we have some results. We do know that this authorization token can be set as a session cookie to log into active session, so we will try that. And luckily, we have successfully logged into Mr. Stark's account. We can see that as a highly privileged user, he has some extra options available in Jarvis panel, which we can now mess with. I hope you enjoyed this session, and if you do have any questions, please let me know or send us an email.